Hello! <laughs> welcome back to Cinema Q Episode 3 with India and Ian. I'm India. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're so glad you're here. And this I, is Cinema Q. I personally had to switch to water because I usually drink coffee during these, but I had to do water. You didn't have water in your coffee mug? No. Oh, I didn't either, actually. Uh, I switched over to a mysterious beverage. Jack and Coke. <laughs> it's actually, there's no Jack. In okay, good. There's no Jack in it. You Okay, this man, I'm not kidding. We work for so our... So in episode three, we're... <laughs> we work for ourselves, so the work day is here at home, and at like 1 p.m., he'll be like, I'm going to have a Jack and Coke. You it's, want one? It might be one of those days, and she always says yes. I mean, it helped. I mean... Sure. We're not. <laughs> Let me ask the boss. Hey, me. <laughs> me? Can I think? have sure. a beer for lunch? Anyway, for lunch. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to episode three. So glad where you're here. We are talking about what is wrong with, we're going to call it secular film. So non-Christian film. Uh, in the past, last episode, we just talked about what is wrong with Christian films. And now moving on to what is wrong with everything else about every other movie. Ever. Ever. We're going to roast it this all. This episode will be four days long. Oh my gosh. Hey, kitty. So we each have our own points, but okay, really quickly, I think it's important to say that the word secular, like we talked about in the last one, is a little bit of an iffy word. I think growing up in like a Christian uh, Western background, it was like, oh, like faith-based or secular. And that's just kind of this weird catch-all word that like people tend to use for mm -hmm. non faith -based. It sounds very divisive, right? Yeah, it, and it shouldn't us be. us and them, the secular people. Right. And so we're trying to uh, talk about just other films that wouldn't necessarily hold the label of Christian film. Right. Mm. So this one's mostly for those Christians out there or people who have any kind of faith background who maybe you haven't watched many films that are outside of your like faith-based genre because you're like, oh, that's like secular or that's worldly or that's going to like confuse me or something. So we're going to try to talk about what is what is in those films that make it so like weird or sometimes hard to watch or mm -hmm. that I don't think is healthy sometimes and how can they be better because that's the whole point is like yeah. we're in the film industry we're gonna make films that don't have like explicit like scripture or bible verses like plastered <laughs> through them like we're not like faith-based filmmakers like we talked about in the last one faith is a foundation not a genre we are faith-based faith filmmakers <laughs> Not we are like making faith. <laughs> films that are faith based. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But faith is a foundation. So we're going to kind of talk about that today and roast yeah. a little bit of the other films out there. Yeah, and what we just might think is wrong with those. And um, another part of what I was going to say was also we hope that this podcast can be for people that aren't Christians and being able to talk about like, hey, why might you resonate with these these films? A little bit more is it because maybe the spoiler alert storyline is very similar to that of jesus and that's why you attach onto it because we want something like jesus so true it, uh hopefully this podcast is for everyone for the believers that want to only watch christian films maybe being able to educate you on how to get into a more secular space of cinema or uh, cinema and also for non-believers to be able to maybe give christian films and cinema a try and also be able to maybe take something a little more worthwhile and hearty out of cinema. 100%. So, Ian. Yes. What's wrong with secular film? What Oof. is so wrong about it? <laughs> uh, that sounded this crazy. One, what's so wrong about it, babe? Let me know. What is so wrong? <laughs> uh, and again, you guys might disagree with us on a lot of things, uh, but this is just my two cents is right now something that is, uh, it, it's kind of broken my heart with cinema is they're trying too hard to keep up with the times and fads that they will sacrifice story for hot topics, right? Mm -hmm. What's currently in the news, what's currently a big debate. I'm going to have main characters that have this specific description because that's what all of culture is talking about. It'll get more ticket sales, but a lot of times there isn't as much heart put into the story that's going on with these characters as is just who the characters are themselves and what minority group or grouping they may have and I don't mind talking about that stuff in film I don't mind having characters that are different and that I disagree with and don't think I, I just want it to not be at the compromise of giving up story and good cinematography and good opportunity for people 
And I don't want other people, you know, nudged out of awards or something that may be better, but they're just not part of this hot topic right now. Sure. Uh, I just, that's something wrong with uh, current cinema in the secular area is that they just lean too hard on trying to get the catchy title and the catchy couple like hot topic uh, terms in, into their uh, story that they end up sacrificing the story altogether, which leads to not good cinema in my opinion. Thoughts on that, India Jade? I agree. I agree. I think there's a ton of films that also just like try really hard to fix something. And I think the point of some of these like really big, really real issues that are coming up in culture, like systemic racism or like sexuality, like these are big topics. And I think like you're saying, when some film or TV show is trying to be just like trendy, They'll just kind of like, it makes it this like kitschy thing of like, uh, for example, Mm -hmm. I'm watching a show right now and there's these teenagers, it's kind of coming of age, but they're like, literally one character just said the like term, oh, that's so heteronormative of you. (laughs) That was like, whoa, that was kind of a strange term. Like, I don't know, I feel like they're trying to fix it by just like addressing it really fast in these conversations without actually like, either expanding totally on that topic and make the whole thing about it. There's another example in New Girl, which I love New Girl, super funny. And I remember talking to a friend about it and there's a character who's black who wants to be a cop. So if you've seen New Girl, Winston, Winnie the Bish, he wants to be a police officer. That's his nickname. Uh huh. He wants to be a police officer. This episode is rated PG-13. And he talks for just the tiniest second about how it's hard. it was hard growing up being black and seeing cops is like not so great. And it's like, oh my gosh, he's gonna do it. They're actually gonna take this comedy and turn it into this really like important piece on like why that matters. And then they don't do it. And it like gets so close and I'm like, "Ah," like, so I guess, okay. All the words to say, like either do it and like hit the nail on the head and make your point or don't like, don't try to just band-aid problems with these hot topic buzzwords, I think. I think that's yeah. my issue. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the buzzwords without the depth. Like yeah. I'm I'm totally fine consuming film that talks about a lot of things that I don't understand or agree with or model my lifestyle after. Um, but I want it to be good cinema. And I think a lot of times they just throw it in mm-hmm. uh, just to just to hit the <sighs> approval of of what right. people are wanting in it, but it doesn't dive into enough depth to make it matter. Yeah. Uh, to me and that's not that's not a you know overarching for every single thing no film is ever dividend like no we're just saying overall in general secular films are using these trendy hot topic uh just touches to try to stay relevant and using and uh, in the end i think that really yeah it like hurts that people group too Mm -hmm. because if there's a group of people that they're like oh finally representation in this certain area and then they just don't actually name the thing they're trying to name it does more damage than good, in my opinion. Like, mm-hmm. that might, you might disagree, comment if you do, but I think it would just do it a little bit more of justice if they were like, this is our stance on this topic and we move through the, the series or let's let's expound on this very complex thing. Yeah, so. absolutely. What else is wrong? Absolutely. I'm trying so, to see my notes. Um, can I actually tag team on my second point off of that one? Yeah. Um, and then we can go on 20 of your points. I'm not trying to dominate the conversation here. <sighs> Uh, another thing, talking about story and lack thereof, um, I, I think that secular films chase money over story a lot of times, and, and they chase the big, attractive cinematography, CGI, big name actor, actresses, and I'm actually going to get into that um, on my fourth point. But a lot of times, I feel like money and the money is important because you need money to create films. Like the camera that we're filming on right now took years and years of saving up to for me to purchase. And so like it costs money. Yes, and we we're just talking about how we wish Christian films had more money. But so many times in the name of wanting to get more money, secular film again compromises and gives up good story mm-hmm. by just trying to have something flashy and quick. Yeah. With big name people at the box office. Uh, to get people in the door because they're faithful to those actors and actresses. Do you have an example so, that comes to mind? There's a lot of effort put into a lot of these just kind of basic action films, which are a thing. But like anyone will go and will, there, there are people that will go and watch every single Liam Neeson movie or every single Nicolas Cage movie because there are people that like follow Nicolas these, Cage. these people, right? Um, 
And I think right now, though, past characters, if we just get to the topic of superhero movies, pretty much any superhero movie so does decently well. Like, even if it doesn't do well in box office reviews, it still gets tons of people through the door and makes hundreds of millions of dollars, typically. Yeah. And so they're just pushing them out one after the other after the other in the name of money. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even care about these characters anymore because it's just them a lot without them doing something that I care about. Because I mean, like... Doctor Strange 27 kind of loses its like, wow, I can't wait to go watch the 15th Ant-Man. Like, yeah, and I don't sure, know. This, like, I love Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, I will uh, watch your Ant-Man movie. But exactly, it right? Loses, it gets you in the door yes, and it gets your money. It does lose the importance. And if we're spending these millions of dollars, time, energy, all these people, mm -hmm. let's make stories that really matter mm -hmm. and not just fluff to make sure that Marvel re meets their quota this year. And again, I think that's partially on yeah, us as consumers that. is what you say? Did I say that? Out? Yeah, I was like, you're allowed to. I thought you said, are you allowed to say? I was like, what else did you say? Sorry, that was great. Marvel. I mean, I'd love to be yeah. cast in your film. Please don't please, hate. Please, me. please, please cast us. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's again on us as the viewers as well. Of we're not willing to be patient for a good story. Like we're demanding. Everyone's like, oh, Avatar took them 14 years to 13 years to release the next. Like it's good. worth it. They waited and they James Cameron sat down for six months just building the world and intricacies that we'll never see, but influences them as they create the world. Like sometimes story takes time. And when these big, you know, production houses are after money alone, they just push out a bunch of content, which then I think loses value. 100%. If we're willing to be patient, like when I was a kid, I used to grow up and be like, all right, every Monday night at nine o'clock, I have to get home from show choir and I get to watch 24 with my parents. And oh, it's a commercial break. I'm gonna go and heat up my SpaghettiOs. I have 45 seconds. And like, I had to wait every week. And now they'll yeah. create something like Stranger Things over the course of three years, put it out on Netflix. And in one night, somebody binges it all, says good job and moves on, when's the next one? And I'm like, where's the sitting in that space, appreciating cinema and being willing to be patient so good story can happen instead of just pushing them out one after the other for money alone. I feel like that's more of a, we're in 2023 and streaming services are a normal problem than just like an overarching film problem. Cause mm -hmm. I'm totally with you. Yeah. But I think that that is an issue of like specifically TV show series and mm -hmm. all the streaming platforms, right? Cause now there's Peacock, Hulu, Apple TV, HBO Max, Netflix. Stars, Netflix. Like you yeah. have to have all of those Disney plus just to keep up with TV shows, and like you said, it comes out, you binge it, it's done, and it's out of your brain. And it's like cinema should be consumed, thought about, like in a huge theater. Like we're big fans of like the huge screening, like the old Experience. fashioned way, because it was not made for, what it, What do you always say? If you watch King Kong on your iPhone, like it doesn't have the same effect than if you're watching it on a 30 foot screen. Like yeah. cinema was made for like a bigger, environment yeah absolutely absolutely so that was my other uh two cents on that point nice was yeah chasing money over story 100 percent. another issue i have with secular films is introducing really big nuanced topics to young audiences or audiences mm -hmm. or just any audience that has access to it so again you might disagree on some of these topics but to me like sexuality erotica softcore whatever sexy steamy makeout scenes having that labeled as like a teen friendly show or even just accessible on streaming services i i'm like ah yeah. oh, no when, when, <laughs> when parents see in the description oh for teenagers and so they're like oh i don't have to set up my parental controls over that because this is made for teenagers and then it introduces them to all of these yeah things that like our, our standards are getting low as a society like there's still a beauty in protecting kids Agree. Like, Agree. We so, need that. my example is I was at the store the other day and I saw this mom with these two girls, probably in my like perspective, like 11, 12 years old at most. They were talking about the show Ginny and Georgia. And I had seen some stuff about it and I haven't watched it yet. And in my mind, it was like Gilmore Girls, like a mom daughter dynamic. And so I was like hearing them and they Drake were like, and Josh, you know, yeah, and they were mentioning that they had to go finish watching season two at home. And I like was like, oh, they seem pretty young, but I guess it's like a family friendly, young teenager drama, whatever. So I start watching it. It is not for little kids. <laughs> First of all, I think I'll do an episode on maybe this show later because I have some thoughts. A colonel. Um, but colonels are our one off mini episodes that just talk 
Explicitly. Maybe something you're passionate about or I'm passionate yes, about. Yes, these little like summaries yeah. of the show. But it's like a mother-daughter dynamic and there's all this stuff in this mom's past that keeps coming up to haunt her. But there's also a lot of coming of age themes. So the younger daughter is 15 years old and like experienced sex for the first time, does drugs, like is drinking with her friends regularly. All of her friends are acting like this is normal. And to watch these kids who were literally like, I know they're probably older in real life, but like literally portraying 15 year olds, like maybe I just live under a rock, but I don't think my standards are too high. I was just like, that's quite a lot. And then to know that in real life, there are girls that are 11 and 12 consuming that and mm. watching these 15 year old characters smoke and drink and have sex with each other. I was that's like- That's their norm. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I could never imagine being like a freshman in high school and just like thinking that that's normal. I know it does happen, but I just feel like there has to be an age appropriateness of knowing that middle schoolers are watching this kind of content and like being introduced to all these very serious themes. I was like, I don't think that's great. So secular films, you gotta do better. Like, or at yeah. least have the warnings of this isn't for little kids. Don't market it to younger audiences. Like yeah. this is like Bridgerton, pink dresses, this whole like, oh, fun English, this vibe. A lot of people love that like Jane Eyre kind of theme. And then it's like basically free softcore porn. Like, no yeah. thanks. Like, I yeah. don't think that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And and it makes us become so numb to it that any more yeah. people are like, oh, it's just Bridgerton. Oh, it's just film. Oh, it's just like, do you know how much screen time these kids are consuming this kind of content that it sticks it starts to yeah it starts to oh, i'm not even like a, a psychologist and i'm not a therapist and i'm not all of these other things but i know that stories matter and i know that stories influence and i know that stories yeah. stick and secular f cinema and films and shows is absolutely introducing way too much to our kids at way too young of an age and writing it off as okay or even if they're saying oh this is wrong they're still watching it and getting ideas and it becomes part of their their patterns it becomes part of their discussions at the lunch table it becomes part of their evenings before they go to bed which then goes into their subconscious and their sleep and dreams and and what they want to do and be like it influences so so much, much. and I, I think story has a heavier weight than people are willing to give it credit for of like oh it's just it's just a comedy it it sits it sits heavily in people's lives yeah. and influences a lot more than than people know so i completely agree with you there yeah and that's like the most what's i know we're not getting political but that's yeah. the most like conservatism i have is like they're influencing our kids but they are <laughs> like, but story matters it really does because i mean if you take a second just to think about the first time you got emotional at a film or like if you watched Bambi as a kid, like mm -hmm. you know that that was like a lot. Like you're thinking yeah. of the emotions that you felt with a Disney movie, like an animated film. Like I remember the Lion King yeah. getting choked up because it's just like, it's powerful. Even if it's, you know, animated stuff and cartoons, like you can still feel real feelings. So I, I guess like overall, you know, yeah. making sure we're not marketing things too young of an age and like knowing that whatever is in film does get like if it's for younger kids especially it does get them thinking of things and you know i'm watching a show that's built for teenagers going i've never heard some of these terms before like drug terms or sex terms and i'm like i'm 26 and i'm married i'm having <laughs> doing the duels with my hubby and i don't even know what they're talking about so i'm like <laughs> what on earth like these poor kids watching this at home think that this is normal and then they suddenly yeah. don't think they're cool because they don't know what they're talking about it bothers me that this stuff carries weight in our lives totally. and the writing off is like oh it's just yeah stuff i can do and it doesn't have any cause on my life and it's like it actually does oh, it can actually take 100 and, and then we're talking a lot about you know things being advertised down to kids but even some of the stuff made for adults yeah. like we need to put a lens and filter through that like we're not trying to be super conservative here like i've watched peaky blinders i've watched some things that are tough to watch and we'll get to those and how to consume those. But still, there are some things that I, I'm just asking you to be wise as you go into this and then kind of know your threshold of what, how much to watch. Maybe don't binge something. Maybe watch one episode a month so you can kind of process it. Talk with people Or about just it. accountability. Yeah, too. that's exactly what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, sit with people, talk about it. Accountability, watch it with someone, decompress afterwards. Right. Um, and, and yeah, we just need to be wise with what we consume because story is heavy. And if we write it off as numbing, then it'll start to actually affect us in subconscious ways that can be really damaging to our lives, our society, 
uh, to everyone around us. So got to be careful because story matters. That's another good t-shirt. Story matters. Uh, we're going to start making all of these and um, <laughs> wearing them on all of our different podcast episodes. Oh, yeah. My other point. Oh, I'm, okay. I Oh, do you want to? No, nope, all you <laughs> okay. did two in a row at the beginning. I have a couple um, thoughts on this last one, but it is my last point. So if you have more, like, mm. feel free. My last point is language. I think, again, we're not like crazy right or left when it comes to politics or like crazy conservative Christian or crazy like liberal, whatever. I think we're very moderate people in like almost every area You're of life. You're very average. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like we have a like level-headed approach to almost any topic. And language is included in that. Like I don't think that, you know, you should never watch any film with any cuss word ever because you're gonna miss out on a lot of really good stories. But if you have a conviction and choose to not swear or choose to not use certain words or phrases, by all means, follow that conviction. Yeah. That's fine. Absolutely. But I do think when it comes to film, sometimes language can be the deciding factor for like a family film. Like mm -hmm. I know my family. <laughs> yeah. Personally, like my my parents don't like watching. Their convictions around that. Yeah, a certain, like, films with a lot of language. So when we try to watch something, even if it has a few words and it's an amazing Academy Award winning film, it's like a pretty instant no if there's like dramatic mm -hmm. language, which- All of the beautiful story around it is written off yeah. because of a couple words. And it's like, how can we move past that to appreciate the beauty of this film? Right, so I would challenge anyone in that boat to like, do consider like pushing past some of it if it's a really solid storyline that you're really interested in, maybe without the kids in the room. But the other thing I will say is that secular films tend to go overboard with the language. One example, we love the show Ozark. We will talk about it very soon on here. Such a good cinematic, beautiful four-part series. Amazing. It's well done. There's a ton of F-words. <laughs> tons and tons of language. And for us, Which makes like, it unbingeable sometimes for us. Yeah, for us, that's not a word that we like use a ton in our like life. Like, I mean, it's just like a strong, hateful word. So you don't really want to fill your life with that. But it's so, so frequent that sometimes it is so hard to be like, okay, I really don't want to keep listening to this because it's like every other line. So I feel like sometimes it also just like loses the creativity of a script, in my opinion, when mm -hmm. writers just like throw in unnecessary really angry, hateful, or curse words just for the sake of like making sure that it's making rated it edgy, MATV, making, it like... making sure that it's rated R so that they don't fall into yeah. the young. I don't know what it is. Another example, Only Murders in the Building. That's exactly what a what cute I was about show. To say. What a fun show. It's like some of my favorite actors all coming together to solve these like cheeky mysteries. I think it's really fun. It doesn't add to the story. Like yeah, but I'm like, why do we need Steve Martin to say so many F words? Like it's just yeah. not helping the case at all. It's just making it hard to watch with a whole family present when it's mm -hmm. like, in my opinion, the show is like a fun game of Clue. Like it's a colorful murder mystery. <laughs> like it's funny. It's like, so cute. I'm like, this is so cute. It's, no, you are so no. cute. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, I don't know, it's making it really annoying, annoyingly and unnecessarily difficult, yeah. I think, when you're just adding in these these language mm -hmm. things for no Absolutely. reason. So it doesn't benefit the story. Yeah, to tag, tag along with that, I agree, right? I mean, people in our everyday lives talk certain ways and very similar to these films. And it's just, it maybe does resonate with some people that that's just your people sure. and that's how you talk and all of that. But when it's not done for the development of the character and the story, it just irks me. Because I would say in Ozark, like, again, I don't think all of the language is necessary, but the fact that Ruth Langmore's character probably does it the most, and she comes from a space and a family and an upbringing. Good point. That that makes sense. Like, when her character overuses it, I'm like, wow, that's kind of a lot. It almost makes me appreciate the character more because I, I my heart understands, this is where you came from. This is how you're brought up. These are your people that you're surrounded with. This is your experience. This is your life. And that makes me understand you better. And then this character over here that just drops it every once in a while, I'm like, well, why? No, it I agree. It doesn't add to that, that character. It doesn't sound like them. And it feels forced just to get the rating a certain way. No, I totally agree. I think that's a good way of saying it is like, like Ruth's character is this like from poverty, came from dirt, no yeah. money, poor, so Trailer trash un uneducated. The, so yeah. she doesn't have a lot uneducated. of creativity in her language. So there comes a bunch of like swear words yeah but it only quotes, murders there were quotes around trailer trash for those yes. on the podcast that that's her like label of the assumptive negative connotations of that title right 
But then in Only Murders, you have these like educated, like used to be a Broadway producer, used to be an actor, mm-hmm. older well cast. Well spoken that. So why do you need to say it all breaks, these words? breaks their character. <laughs> it just breaks their character development. And I think it's unnecessary sometimes that, I think it's a lazy way out to be honest. I agree. Yeah. I have one more point on language. Okay. Yeah. And then if you want to. Yeah, I have two I know more, have points, more points actually. Okay. And then my, we got to wrap up this episode. My mm-hmm. other point with language, and this is because again, like I am a Christian. It always has bothered me when people just say like Jesus Christ or like GD, like out of context or just, you know what I mean? Like when yeah. they just throw around Jesus Christ, like as like a obscenity. For me, and this is my little biased conservative window sit that I sit on, (laughs) but it's like, do you ever hear anyone else's God or religious title being thrown around like it's just casual? Yeah, and not even casual, but a lot of times with a negative tone. Yes, like it's like this thing. Yeah, it's... It's frustrating. I would say it's very frustrating as someone who loves the Lord and takes faith seriously. Like Our lives are built around Jesus Christ. Right. It's not like one of those, like, I'm feeling persecuted. Yeah. <laughs> but it is one of those, like, hey. It's holiness to it. Yeah. If you, if you are of any faith at all and somebody blatantly takes the name, like, Allah, and mm-hmm. slams it over and over and over in modern People cinema. People would be mad about be that. be furious. But I feel like it's for the insensitive. Christian, it's like, eh, it's just understood mm-hmm. that we all have to like deal with it. We culturally normalized it and it's sad. It is sad. And I think personally, it also turns Jesus, like the name of Jesus into like a meme yeah. or like this funny, silly anecdote versus like, it loses the holiness, like you mm-hmm. said, of this God and this belief system that we really take seriously and care about. So that's my other point with secular cinema is I'm like a little way too tired of hearing the name that I worship thrown mm-hmm. around as if it's just this obscene, silly, comical, like just as silly as saying Santa Claus or whatever, yeah. or just like in the place of the like F word or some other like obscenity. Sure. It's like, excuse me, like, please don't. So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. my challenge is like, can we please be respectful of everyone's faith and not just yet? Yeah, thank God. Yeah. I mean, I've been in auditions before where the sides that I was given or the scripts that I was given or the scenes that I was asked to do yeah. have that stuff. And I, I sat respectfully with the writers and the directors and I was like, hey, I appreciate this opportunity and I respect your writing. I can respect you still and disagree with you, but I'm not willing to do this. You can cast or not cast me based off of it. Like being able to stand in my convictions on that has been really important. And I just think it's unnecessary in film and also to the point where it is insensitive and we're willing to bash Christians in that space uh, because it's like, oh, you are uptight and conservative if you are actually like trying to, you know, hold sovereign, hold sovereign and holy the God that we believe in. And I'm like, hey, I love Jesus. He doesn't need me to protect him. He can handle himself, but... I love Jesus and I want people to know that I love Jesus and and voicing my opinion on saying, hey, like that is just insensitive. It's it's not a great way to approach language sometimes in film. And again, I think it is a cheap, easy way that people have just become numb to, some people have become numb to. And I think we need to be a little more uh, aware of that. I agree. And yeah, like you said too, like, I feel like I just want to, over communicate that like we're not stuck up people like we say uh, words like i call him my sexy ass husband because oh, he is <laughs> wow pg-13 on episode three there you go but we'll get the little explicit mark mm. on our episode we will. but i just think that it's like language is universal in a lot of ways like important. it's so important to communicate it's how we all communicate and what we have d- deemed as swear words is so like not the issue. Like I am less concerned about it's the heart posture behind. Yeah, the words, I'm less right? concerned about the word itself versus like why is it being used and the heart posture. And if you get that jab over and over at your own faith, mm-hmm. it's like that's frustrating. Or just like consistently like throwing these giant angry words in like comedic ways, then it loses the yeah. fact that those are angry words. So absolutely. I'm speaking like I'm talking to a kindergartner, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. it's real. So absolutely, absolutely. So do you no, have more points? Point. I do, I do. Um, something else I have wrong with secular films, cinema, TV shows is its representation of Christians majority of the time. 
he said it. And I think that it is sometimes accurate, um, but most of the time in secular films, the Christians are a culty, uh, secretly bad guy, has this high holy horse that they ride on, Dang. and they look down on people. And I, I have rarely seen in secular cinema a beautiful representation of someone that follows Jesus and loves people and loves their neighbor as themselves and loves God. Like, that frustrates me a ton. Ooh. I mean, even when we get back to older, uh, like, uh, The Last Kingdom, when we get back into the early days of the human existence, um, back in, you know, 1000 AD to 1400, whatever. Like, even back then, the kings were these Christians versus these Vikings, and they're murderous terrible people which might be historically accurate but then in modern day it's always the catholic priest that is secretly this terrible person or in peaky blinders the christians are they it's just i've never really seen a picture of just maybe the asian grandfather that loves the lord and is kind yeah and respects people and treats people with dignity it's unfortunately because the writers have probably never seen one in their real life so it's yeah. hard for them to write what they don't know. And so, so they, us as believers need to step up, follow <laughs> Jesus and stop. <sighs> it's sad. I think it's sad, but it's true. So like, again, yeah, if you're a believer watching this, like you matter so much yeah, you <laughs> for really that do. reason, you can help like, change someone's be perspective. Be an example. Because I'm sure Jesus sat with like, Judas probably had a mouth, Peter probably had a mouth on him. Sure. Right? And they, and, but Jesus frequently surrounded himself with people that weren't like him yet he still loved them respected them showed them their worth and and i i just it saddens me that cinema negatively portrays christians majority of the time when in reality we should be the people that are the first ones that people go to for yeah help and aid and friendship and respect and comfort and prayer and love and all of that so and that's not necessarily like ex like acceptance because as a follower of jesus i want to push people more and more to be like jesus and so like i told india i was like i don't want you today four years later into our relationship to be the same woman that i met then or that i married two years ago yeah i want you to grow i want you to change i will never say that you're okay the way you are because you are great you are wonderful but i want you to continue to grow and become better and holy and i think what uh -oh. wait a second what did you just have a little it's January 26th. This is our first date. This is our first date four years ago. Oh my ago. gosh. Ah! 12 days after we matched online. Wow. Oh. Happy oh. first date four years Happy ago. Happy first date anniversary. <laughs> Okay. All right, we're back. I love him. Oh, love you, babe. Wait. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Continue. Wow. So, yeah, I just uh, am excited for secular films to have a uh, good representation of a honest believer in Jesus that is not perfect, but there is something set apart and different about them because they have the spirit of Jesus in them. True. So I'm excited to see that. I have uh, so many like things. I'm sure we'll get into them when we're actually talking about series and episodes and films, but there's so many examples of this where like, I'm sure you can think of a couple where Christianity is portrayed in a way that's completely just not accurate, but it makes me sad because it's like, oh, this is all everyone else thinks about. Like one comes to mind, um, one episode that comes to mind is in Insatiable. It's a Debbie Ryan kind of weird, murdery, <laughs> jealousy, it, so teenage drama show a couple years back. It wasn't great. Um, but she like at one point decides that all these things aren't working for her. So she tries to get into faith and then they have the priest do an exorcism to get her demon out. And it like instantly goes to that. Or in yeah. Riverdale, Cheryl's character at one point starts her own ministry and her own religion. And they're like worshiping but mother earth or something. They're, but they're kind of presenting it as Christian. Yeah. Ish. Like, it's so mm. bizarre. And another one we're about to watch that I'm really excited to talk about on here is Under the Banner of Heaven with Andrew Garfield, mm -hmm. very nice looking man. Um, not as nice as you. You didn't have to throw that in there, but <laughs> just, okay. It just came to mind. He was considered not handsome enough to play, what is it, Prince Caspian in the Chronicles of Narnia? Who's the prince really? in like the third one? Yeah, it's Prince Caspian. Prince Caspian. He oh. auditioned and was told he wasn't handsome enough. 
Well, we'll get but him But the now. guy that got it is also very handsome. So, True. But Andrew, I think that you could have gotten the role. You got it, buddy. But he plays a Mormon LDS detective in Utah. And I went to Utah last summer and my friend told me about it because I was like, oh, this is very interesting. And so I'm very curious to see how it's portrayed, how their faith is portrayed. Because I would say Mormonism is like not Christianity, but it's like in a similar way, it's this conservative kind of church. So it, it's just interesting it's how- It's a secular series, right though? Yes. That, that has a portrayal of Mormon faith. Right, right. And so there's definitely like real bad stuff that happens in churches of all faiths. Like I'm not trying to deny that that is true, but there's also a lot of good stuff that happens as well. And a lot of really beautiful God honoring stuff that happens from you know people of faith. And so it'd be nice to see, like Ian said, some solid characters who can show that like faith isn't a joke and that God is real and worth it. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I have one more point, I believe, if you are fine moving on from that. Move and on. And then we can call it quits on episode three. Um, okay, this kind of goes back to the first point. We probably could have just ended after that, but I, I want to talk about this to see if there is something here because when I was writing this point out, I didn't know how much weight it, it carries. Hmm. Um, big A-list Hollywood names are names because most of them have a lot of talent. They're phenomenal. Um, and then a lot of the same people tend to get roles. There's like, you know, the top 100 people that tend to be in all the films. And something that I wish secular films did more is with all of that money, give more opportunity to no name people or people like that talent eventually has to be discovered and you kind of have to work from the bottom up. And it kind of seems like a, a clicky Hollywood. Like if you're on the insider group, you get first go at all of these auditions. And there are some incredibly talented people, people that we know, people that we've worked with yeah. that don't get the same opportunity because Hollywood's a little clicky and secular films lean on these A-list names right. because it'll make more money. It'll get more people into those seats and theaters. It'll become a bigger box office hit. Like it was so refreshing that granted, yes, it's a big name, but like Nomadland, right? Mm -hmm. Still a big name, but Francis the McDormand. the lean on non famous actors and people, and that was beautiful to me. Yeah, and I think that secular film in Hollywood, you see that a little more, is give opportunity to incredibly like go into, and I see it in the music industry too, like give people with talent opportunity, and instead of just leaning on somebody because they have a big name and they might not be the best anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe they used to be. Maybe they were really good. Maybe they are really good. But there are some people that just get every character in every movie in one you know in their niche of every action film has these three people and every comedy has these six people and it's like what if we gave chances to yeah. uh talented people and, and presented more opportunity which i guess is the one good thing about streaming services pumping out more and more content is there is more i was gonna a say a lot too. more films being made to bring a lot more opportunity to people anymore and i am excited and thankful for that but uh i wish secular film could have six success with new faces agree and i'd like those faces to be, be ours. ours thank you yeah. there's so much talent everywhere and our next uh actual film review that we're gonna do is on avatar the way of water the way of water the second one so so good if you didn't watch the uh, first one 14 years ago or in the last 14 years that's on you oh well, we're skipping over that one a little bit and moving on to number two but what I was going to say is the budget for that film, you said was what? like Probably $350 million. I didn't actually look it up, but that's my best guess. And they're making in the billions off of the mm -hmm. profit, right? Yeah, they're so, in the top five all time, probably up to, if I had to guess at this point, $1.6 Probably close to two. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So like obviously so many people made that happen. All of them deserve to be paid and paid very well. But truthfully, we know the producers are going to get a lot. And then maybe some of the actors have like a commission. What is it called? Like kind of like a royalty, a royalty or some kind of percentage that they get from sales. But the majority of those other like the PAs, the grips, the, you know, crafty people, yeah. they're not going to get any of that billions. They're going to get mm. the little like $1,000 that they signed on with or whatever. Yeah. And what's unfortunate is that that huge number that's coming into the people who are pocketing it, it'd be amazing to see that they turn that out into these giant grants and scholarships for starting out actors or to look for, you know, talent around the whole country. And so that it wasn't such a clicky thing and it was like everyone gets to make beautiful films and Absolutely. rise together. Yeah, and that is something that I'm thankful for of access to t technology these days is 
Like, Andy and I don't have to wait for Hollywood to come knocking on our door and the opportunity in the audition room to get onto an A-list film. We're able to still make things now together yeah. because we worked hard, we saved up for it, we surrounded ourselves with talented people, and now we have a film showing in L.A. Uh, because of that. And that's not to boast on our end, but I am thankful that there is more opportunity for people, and it's growing. And with social media, you can get a lot of exposure and you can build a name for yourself now in a lot more ways and to break into that clickiness of Hollywood. Uh, but yeah, I just it's think just we It's just a lot of work. Like yeah. you saved for years yeah. and took all the jobs. And I worked like four <laughs> jobs at one time throughout college so that I wouldn't be drowning. And we're still like, you know, it's not like- Still a long way to go. We got student loans, we got a house mortgage. You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's not like everyone but has that a, access. But still thankful to have a house and have an sure. education while you know you paid your way through college with a camera and i you know i'm paying yeah. my way through life with a camera as well what's the phrase we're so blessed so pull so justin bieber on me right now what does it say so, so blessed so grateful so thankful yeah. never gonna take it for granted always gonna give back <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh the most never iconic grammy's never. thank you speech ever <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Biebs, we love you. Um, love you, Justin. Yeah, so that's episode three of What's Wrong with Secular Film. Uh, sorry, this one went a little long, but not sorry. I uh, hope you guys <laughs> took something out of this. There's a lot wrong. There's a lot wrong, and we got a long way to go, but we're super thankful for cinema. Um, this is just us nitpicking what's wrong with it, uh, but we have a lot of things that we love, and we will be talking about that as we get into future episodes. So next episode, episode four, Avatar, The Way of Water. Please go watch it so we can talk about it. And it's in theaters right now. It is. Go watch it. Don't don't, I know you want to just sit on your couch and do the little like, I can watch it at home. Don't do it. Don't. We watched it in 3D. Get the 3D glasses. It was so good. Yes. It was amazing. And you're going to hear us talk all about mm -hmm. it in the next episode. So. Absolutely. And people will say, oh, it's like three and a half hours long. I know that you have sat there and binged six hours of a TV show in one night before. So three and a half hours is you. nothing. Oh, yeah. So please go appreciate good cinema. Um, This is one of the ones that even though we haven't rated it yet, we're assuming is on the higher end. We're doing this one as like one to watch for you guys. Yes. So we encourage you to go watch it so you can join in in the we conversation We will spoil, next week. so please watch yes. before you click on. I think that's a good note for any yes. episode when you see the title has the TV show or the film in it, we're gonna be spoiling and covering the criticism mm -hmm. of the whole thing. The good, the bad, so, the ugly. Yes. It, so don't click on something if you're planning on watching it, but if you're like, eh, I'll probably never see it or I'll forget. Then or sure. why should I watch this? I was, I was on the edge. So maybe listen yes. to the podcast for us to give you some spoilers. But uh, in the episode will, before, you'll you'll mm -hmm. hear us preview which one we're going to talk about Absolutely. in a non-spoiler way. So you'll know. To and watch it. maybe it'll give you a new lens to be able to go back and watch it again yeah. and have a new appreciation for something that you may have missed out on before. So True. that's it for episode three of Cinema Q. Thank you all for watching and hopefully tune in. Uh, please tune in and we'll see you next week for episode four, Avatar, The, the Way of Water. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye.